apologies at the beginning of this for not recording a proper intro for this, but this was a table done for our 5th Street station. Um, we were in desperate need of a new one. I think the one that we had here was an old conference table uh, that was made out of particle board. It was kind of falling apart. So we decided to make a new one. I volunteered to do the base for it. Right here at the beginning of the video is just a bunch of footage of milling up the rough lumber. We wanted to make it relatively inexpensive, so a lot of what's used here is construction lumber. The top for it is MDF, but another of the guys at the station who does countertops did epoxy work on this table and made it look just fantastic. Uh, so even though this table was not super expensive, I think it came out looking great. Uh, and this is just how I ended up building the legs for it. So I hope you enjoy. So like with everything I make, uh, I'm overcomplicating it. Um, I decided I wanted to taper these legs. They, there's some knots, there's some imperfections. Some stuff I kind of want to get rid of, like that. Uh, so I made a tapering jig. This is just a piece of plywood with some scraps. Um, I brad nailed some fences on here, uh, so it will rip it from its biggest, which is four inches, uh, down to two. Uh, and then I'm gonna rotate it and do the same thing. It's gonna take this piece here, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna run this edge over the bandsaw, and everything that's hanging over is gone. Here's the other three leg blanks going quicker. And like I said, you, you see that I, I cut one side, I flip the angled side up into the air and then cut the other one. That keeps everything registered properly and true and ensured that all four of these came out the exact same. So this is a comparison between a tapered and a non-tapered leg. And you can see the one on the right, it, it's just really big and blocky. It doesn't make for, for fine furniture, or it's not very appealing. Um, but the tapered leg, while it gets to keep a lot of the strength of the one on the right, it also doesn't look as big and bulky and out of place. And this is just some footage of the sanding on the legs after I got them off the bandsaw. They had some marks on them. I needed to get everything smoothed out where the taper ended uh, to get them ready to be painted. So it's time to start drilling all the dowel holes for all these legs. Uh, one thing about dowel joinery that I learned the hard way is that these drill bits that they send you with the jigs are 3 8 of an inch drill bits. Most of the dowels that you're going to find at your big box stores, uh, Home Depot Lowe's, stuff like that, are either a little bit bigger than 3 8 or they're exactly 3 8 in diameter. So fitting them into these holes, especially if there's going to be glue involved, is almost impossible. I bought this drill bit set off Amazon. This was a happy little accident. Shout out to Bob Ross. And uh, it came with a 25 60 fourths drill bit, which is almost the same size as this. It's just so it's 60 fourths of an inch bigger. And it works out great. Um, drilling the holes with this one, following out with this one, makes the dowels fit great. Leaves room for glue. They're still tight enough that everything goes together the way it's supposed to. So 25 60 fourths drill bit, if you're gonna be doing a lot of dowel joinery, it will save you a lot of headaches. So here's an example of the dowel situation. So these are 3 eighths of an inch holes, perfectly, okay? And if you look, this dowel is thicker than the hole that I drilled. It's just, just a hair. If I hammered this, it would probably go, but this is pine and this is oak. And I don't wanna crack anything, I don't want to run into any problems. It also doesn't need to be that tight. I need room for glue. So uh, what I got here is this 15, 25, 60, yeah, whatever I said earlier in the video, and I'm running it in reverse, and I'm just gonna ream these holes out. I don't want to do anything but widen this hole out just a hair. Okay, that's all it takes, and now, this will fit and you can hear it fits great uh, it has room for glue in there but it's friction fit there's no wiggle I mean it is solid 
2564th drill bit. After doing all of the layout, it's just drilling holes in the legs um, and then drilling your matching holes for the aprons to make sure everything lines up right. So <clears throat> this is the, uh, the joinery method that I was gonna try for this and we're gonna see what happens when I go to put everything together. It is the two dowel holes that I used the uh, doweling jig for. As I ran a pocket hole right here, I, when I go to fit this together, I'm gonna put glue in the dowel holes like I normally do, but instead of clamping everything together, I'm going to uh, tighten in these pocket screws and just kind of suck everything together and clamp it that way. This will all be underneath the apron. Nobody will ever see this. I'm also gonna be coming over with some corner braces. So even this will be covered. You'll never know that these were here. But we're gonna see when I go to put it together, hopefully it works out as well in reality as it does in my head. So one of the last things I had to do, um, I put a notch on the inside of it. I'm gonna run some 45 degree corner braces inside of here. Uh, just to give it some racking strength, it's gonna be screwed to an MDF top, so it should have racking strength, but a little bit extra never hurts. Um, so I got this to where it's sitting down. It's just below the, uh, the height of the tabletop here. I wanted to give it a little bit of clearance so that it's out of the way, but it will be attaching both aprons on either side. This is just notched out with a uh, Japanese saw. Um, just took a little bit of time. It's pine, it goes quick, so yeah. So the final step for the legs here is to chamfer the feet of them so that as it gets dragged around the station, gets moved around and everything like that, the legs aren't going to splinter or break off or anything. Uh, I didn't get any video of it during the assembly process at the station, but here's just a few still images uh, as it transitions from just a pile of lumber to an actual functioning table. So here's where the epoxy work started. You can see the edge that was put on it, uh, covering up all the MDF, the seal coat here. Uh, then the designs that we put on the top of it. Uh, the emblem laid over the top of all of this, we got it centered and flattened down with one more clear coat over the top of everything to protect it and smooth out the surface. The rest are just some still images that we took, getting in place, putting it with the chairs, everything like that. Uh, I hope you enjoy.